Chancellor and respected Pro Vice Chancellor Professor Uma Kanjilal Madam for their timely guidance and helping us during various planning sessions of these knowledge transfer series. And respected Pro Vice Chancellor Professor Uma Kanjilal Madam for their timely guidance and helping us during various planning sessions of these knowledge transfer. Today we are gathered here for the fifth lecture on unleashing the power of AI, transforming digital asset management and asset monetization. A special thanks to our today's speaker, Dr. Venu Gopal, co-founder of Protex Medical Care New Delhi for readily accepting our invitation in a short notice. He has consistently used his expertise to address some of the most pressing global challenges. Sincere welcome to Professor Suresh, Director Sources, all the directors, regional directors, colleagues from Sources, including different faculties from different schools in IGNO. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to our enthusiastic participants who come from the diverse background, including academia and industry professional. A special mention goes to our young and promising learners who have enrolled in PCA, MCA, and PhD programs. You have joined us for the noteworthy online knowledge transfer series, which is organized by the School of Computer and Information Sciences at IGNO. IGNO, as the world's largest open university, promises to bring a unique and innovative dimension to this session by featuring speakers from various fields. Today, our expert, Dr. Venu Gopal, delve into critical topic of artificial intelligence with digital asset management. He is going to discuss how AI transformed the organization and monetization of digital assets, AI algorithm streamlines categorization, retrieval analysis for optimized utilization, automation enables personalized content creation, elevating engagement, the synergy between AI and DA, DAM, that is digital asset management, not only boosts operational efficiency, but also unlock new avenues for asset monetization. So this session is going to highlight AI potential to reshape traditional asset management, fostering innovation and extracting untapped value in the digital landscape. I extend my gratitude to each and every one of you for your unwavering commitment to the pursuit of knowledge. Together, let's continue our journey of knowledge exploration and growth. Thank you once again for giving this opportunity to coordinate these knowledge transfer series. Now I request Professor Suresh, Director Sources, to address the gathering. Sir, you are muted. Uh, thank you, Professor Sandeep, and congratulations to you for successful organization of the lectures under Knowledge Transfer Series, and I think this is the fifth lecture in the series. And I welcome our uh, today's uh, speaker, expert, Dr. Venugopal. Thank you very much, Dr. Venugopal. You agreed at a very short notice. Your lecture is going to be very much useful for all our learners as well as our faculty and others because uh, you are going to speak on the power of uh, artificial intelligence and uh, transformation of a digital asset management and asset monetization. And I would like to introduce Dr. Venugopal. He is an innovator, technical advisor, strategist, investor, and Chief Technology Officer. He has uh, done his education from Delhi University and his uh, PhD in Information Technology from uh, Ecole de Management de la Sorbonne, a university abroad. And currently, he is also Chief Technology Officer for Roque Online. Then he is uh, also associated with uh, Value Weaver Consulting as CTO for their Asia-Pacific regions. 
Then he was also chief advisor for Skill Earn Global, and he's co-founder of uh, Future Gifting Adventures and uh, Private Limited. In fact, he's associated with many companies. Earlier, he was with Microsoft also. And in among many people I meet, I find him with a very unique profile, trying to encourage people who are having skill, who are technologically bent upon. And of course, he is also a venture capitalist. That's what uh, I realized during my discussions with him offline. So welcome, Dr. Venugopal, to IGNO virtually. And I hope that whatever portions uh, which you are uh, unable to show because it's being recorded online and proprietary in nature, if possible, at the fag end, we can stop the recording and you can continue with it. And then we will again switch on the recording when you think that the proprietary portions are completed. So thank you once again. Welcome, Dr. Ben Gopal, uh, Professor Sandeep Vaurti. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, the you. moment we have all been waiting for is here. I kindly ask all the participants to please mute their microphones and turn off their cameras. If you have any questions during presentation, feel free to use the chat box to send your queries. We will address these questions during question and answer session. And feedback link will be shared uh, at the end of the session. And those who will fill the feedback form will receive the certificate after verification. Thank you, Dr. Venugopal, once again for gracing us with your presence and for being a beacon of knowledge and inspiration for us all. The stage is now yours, and we eagerly await your words of wisdom. Dr. Venu. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity, sir, today. So, as you see, that uh, uh, there's this topic is about the well written topic. I think I had given you a brief. Uh, or you and you have just summarized it very well. So it's unleashing the power of AI, transformation, digital management, and asset monetization. So I'll be talking about these two topics. So digital asset management has been there for a while. It has been there for around uh, 15, 20 years. And a lot of our uh, entertainment industries have been working on this digital management, but they have not been able to do the asset monetization using these systems. So these systems were more of a, you know, a, just a similar to document management system or just a repository, wherein they were just kind of using them to store something. It could be, had been very well stored as a, you know, storage and it was just lying there. So there are organizations who have worth 140 years, 120 years of data available with them in a, you know, a print format or in a digital format, which they had started long time back. There are museums in it. There are, you know, old companies in it, information companies in it. And there are big uh, media houses in it, advertising agencies in it, which is now coming back because of the whole pull of the social media into the mainstream where they can monetize these assets. So this is a very, very, uh, like, you know, niche area where, very less people are working right now in India, but yes, uh, abroad there are places and for, you know, the purpose of uh, newsrooms, for the purpose of research, for the purpose of journals, people are using it. And I'm uh, quite sure you guys also might have used certain tools like ProQuest and all, wherein they have like uh, archives for the museums and for journals and all. So this is where people, if they are in research, they are using it and the university is paying for them. But now, the time has come in because we have a content creator, like almost we have a content creator in every home because people are now using social media to create and render content. So therein the change is now you find a content creator who is sitting at home can pay you some amount because he's making a money out of it. So you have to expose these assets to the overall world. Okay. So your paradigm shift is happening. It is not limited to just having a knowledge base 
or a knowledge repository, but it is more of using the digital asset for monetization. And in case you have to monetize, there has to be two, three things which you have to take care of. That is the content curation, using a quick search, a quick enterprise search, plus able to tag, auto tag uh, assets without manual intervention so that because of the nature of this thing, it gets tagged, okay? So now what is digital asset and how it is used? So the overall definition, by definition, digital asset is a, you know, a digital representation of a physical object or a service in form of a picture, audio, video in multiple formats that can be consumed on a variety of digital devices like smartphone, computer vision. So we all know that and we have been using that, right? So it has been used for, uh, you know, advertising, services of various engagement, and it has been used in web pages, marketing campaigns, promotional social media channels, print media. We see this all over the place. Whatever we see, if we see an ad in a newspaper, that's a digital content because it ultimately goes on an e-paper as well. Though it is in print media, but now you have e-papers everywhere. Similarly, a lot of other things are there. Let's say videos, pictures and all. So the key to all of these asset is basically tags meta tags right so we have been all studying meta tags and we have been using meta tags and uh, asset tags or rather various kind of tags to search these things but we have never seen that where exactly we have been able to use this very nicely if we see that overall curation of things how they are happening in terms of this uh, assets we have we realized that over a period of time, it is basically considered that uh, when we are working on these assets, we realize that these tags which we put in, and if they are manually updated, there is a challenge. We are not able to work perfectly on them. So what exactly is required was somebody or some thing to help us do a lot of tasks which has a good evaluation criteria which can take their decision which can automatically go through the overall data sources try to find out similar things select certain tags and give me a ready to use output which i can approve and can be tagged to the asset so that it is searchable usable and monetizable so therein ai had came into picture and that is what our topic is today that what, how exactly AI is adding on to it. So before going on to that, I'm just taking you through the digital asset, the digital asset life cycle, how it works, what are the various steps, so that for people who don't have a background, they're able to understand. And then we will briefly go into AI and then I'll talk about a use case, how it is, okay? So if you go to this, this is the asset management system which is an enterprise grade platform. So a digital asset management system. Now we have been talking about digital assets. Now, what is a DAM? So when we call it, the short form is digital asset management. So that is DAM. And it is a platform which enriches the asset with auto-generated meta tag, configurable digital access rights, rich collaboration, workflow, and intuitive search. So if you see this, this is what something you have been using it. We have been using it on web portals everywhere. And the difference in it is if you see the thing called enrich. Enrich asset with auto-generated meta tag is, let's say, for example, there is a picture. It has four varieties in it. And uh, what happens out there is it is simply that in a picture, a person is wearing a hat, a person is wearing a skull cap a person is standing in front of a famous, mo famous monument so that picture if it is there somebody has to look at it and find these tags but with the kind of auto generated meta tags using ai we are able to generate a lot of meta tags around it which can be seen by predicting a picture as a human uh, vision okay and there are various uh, tools and APIs available for all these systems and they help us identify that. And all the major OEMs like Google, AWS, Azure, they have their own uh, flavor of uh, API available for such tasks. 
So now what happens is configuring the digital rights. Why do I need digital rights today? So digital rights basically now is a very important topic and it has two things. One is the overall access rights to it, which is more from a technical perspective that who accesses it, what is the kind of access I get, what I can do with that digital asset. And the other one is more of a functional aspect or the legal aspect of it, where we are talking about the rights to share certain things because it is a monetizable asset and the rights to royalty. So this is one of the major things. So I remember me working with Viacom uh, like 10 to 15 years back, wherein Viacom has th had this major problem that if I have an asset and somebody is using it, uh, it is basically the times when, uh, you know, online music, iPods and all these, uh, you know, YouTubes were just uh, budding uh, systems and people were embracing things like iPods for music and all. And people were using this music and they were stealing it or either some places, some uh, third parties were selling it. So their issue was, even if they are buying this music, how do I monetize this asset? Because I have to pay a specific royalty to a person. I have to make the search intuitive. I have to track that whole asset, how it is happening, who is viewing it, how the asset is being uh, overall being used and how I can manage this whole thing and churn out that how much, uh, like, you know, what was the uh, time the asset was viewed and who viewed it and does a copyright uh, infringement happens on it or not. Who, if it is being, it is a royalty-free video or audio or it is a, a like, you know, royalty-based audio and video where I have to pay somebody and he can legally trace me into the system if I'm not doing that. So those things were, were not easy at uh, the beginning because what things were happening is people were not able to identify the actual use and not they were not able to make a case about it. Okay? So that was one of the major issues which we had and uh, that is what we were working on. So now with the you know AI coming into mainstream and cloud coming into picture where we don't have a constraint of uh, hardware and we don't have a constraint around innovation and scaling horizontally and vertically both which is one of the key factors for any uh, you know heuristic system so that is where we understood that now how digital assets can, can also be worked out and if we see there is an old saying that uh, picture speaks a thousand word so if you see the overall content today is moving towards short videos pictures, film strips, and, you know, a readable PDFs, of course, and other uh, portals and readable articles, which is not that much popular. If you see that uh, Apple has not been able to, you know, cope up with the Kindle business a lot because Kindle was, Amazon has not been able to, iPad has not been becoming popular. Kindle is not being, uh, becoming popular AWS product because of, the usage and the reading habits of users have changed. They try to have a video content. And that's why today we see we have influencers, we have video being created, uh, ad being created on the video. Instagram is one of the major channels where people are consuming and youngsters are consuming for learning. And they are able to see that there is a paradigm shift all around. So digital assets are becoming important. First is that. So we have to see the things which we are talking about is collaboration, the workflow facility and intuitive search. So the workflow, why do we need a workflow? As I said, that if you have to track something, you have to make sure the content is being rendered correctly. Who's the audience of the content, whether it is a decision making the system has to do, wherein it has to decide that, okay, it's a content, which is a, a non-shareable content, or it is a royalty based content. So I have to make sure that I just go ahead and uh, make sure I track the usage of the content. I don't put in or I track that overall video is scanned or audio is scanned for the relevant uh, content, which should be either blogged or a message should be appearing or the relevant charges should be made to the user, either in form of subscription or any other way, which whichever the company decides to monetize on. So that is where we have the need of this digital asset management system. And 
the intuitive search, which is one of the key capabilities, why Google is popular today, and now chat GPT is becoming popular today, is the capability of how quick you can give a result and targeted result to a person. Because nowadays, the time span of getting something is less than 10 minutes. If I want to do something, I would search in for 10 minutes. And that is also in the past, we have seen the single, uh, like, you know, there are almost 20% users, only 20% of the people who search on Google, they go to the third page. They get their results on the first page and second page and they are done with it. So it might vary. It might be 15 to 20%. People might be doing surveys and telling different things. But yes, if we uh, see all the relevant surveys of all the uh, like, you know, uh, big fours and all who are doing regular surveys like Gartner's of the world, Deloitte's of the world, we will be able to see that it is just 20% of the user who usually move beyond second or third page in a Google search. So that's why then when uh, uh, other alternatives came in, wherein we have uh, something called chat, chat GPT came in or open AI came in, people were getting lesser, like, you know, because we need comfort. So we need a Oracle to answer everything for us. So these AI engines are acting based on that. Okay. So moving to the next slide. This is the asset lifecycle management from the market context. What is, you know, the overall asset lifecycle management we are talking about? And what is the cycle we have? So just for certain statistical data, 50% of the enterprise uh, have started using digital asset management in the last two years because of this whole digital content. And it's not something that it is a need of media houses or ad companies or companies... Uh, dealing with the uh, movies and all. So it's not related to media and entertainment vertical now. Everybody needs it because if you see right from manufacturing to, you know, retail to FMCG, everybody is doing marketing today and 70% of their marketing is digital marketing. If we see there are just 30% of the people who are marketing based on this. So, you know, the traditional means of marketing are just taken by 30%, wherein you don't see any big holdings now. A lot of businesses are just running on the key digital marketing. Okay. So that is how it is. So moving to this overall cycle, if we see this, this cycle is based on the, just a moment, yes, this cycle is based on this ideation first. Wherein, if we move from upstream to downstream, you'll see that there is an ideation. So I think this is something for asset life cycle, which is out there. So for any asset, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but I'll just take you through that. That ideation is there when you just try to sit down, have some creative tools used for an idea. Then you use some tools for creation of that idea. Like a simple web designer can be a content creator. They just go down, jot down at first, and they just work on the overall idea of what I want to make, if I want to make a new music, what is the kind of music I want to make and all. So that is how they work it out. And then the second thing is creation. So they use tools for creation. So it can be anything. It can be Adobe, it can be Quark Express, it can be this for this is for creative ones, or it can be anything else as well. Right. So all these things can be done. Okay. So that is how it is. We are working on it. So the next thing is, once we do it, we do an orchestration and review. So this is true for any publishing house or anybody which we are working on. So that is how it is. So orchestration is like how you want the approval is there and how things are working. So that is what it will be. And then the other thing is that uh, if you see that where this needs to go for if there is a, you know, if uh, there is a level of approval required. So the usually in the overall asset life cycles or anywhere you have various roles like contributor, creator, and then approver. So usually that is the roles. Usually that is the minimum three roles you will have. And then you can distribute into multi multiple roles. So the tool helps us in all these orchestrations, reviews, and approval. And then storage and organization of these uh, assets. So the major thing is the storage and organization. 
So today it's the key that if I'm trying to work on certain things, I should be able to quickly find it out, quickly see it and reuse it. So let's say, for example, I will give you a very simple if, a example of something called asset localization. So what happens today is, let's say, for example, in a specific period in northern India, there are certain, you know, colors or certain specific verbiage or certain specific festival specific ads come in, which might be liked in northern part of the world, but they are not, uh, you know, mappable to the eastern or the southern part of the world because their tradition differ, their overall, uh, you know, cultural uh, differences there, their festivals are different. But my, this thing would be, let's say, for example, uh, you have this uh, in Langaland, you have a festival, which is Hornbill Festival, which is nobody celebrates around in India. So Hornbill Festival is something wherein a marketing guy would be selling the same things or rather it's a festive time. He would try to sell specific goods in, uh, you know, Nagaland or Nachal and all those areas where it is done. And then he would also try to uh, sell the same set of things out here in a different scenario where it is basically other part of the world. So in out there, the system gives you an AI based capability to localize these resource. Okay, so you don't have to create them again because your context is same, your product is same, but because of the cultural difference, they are basically not available to you. So that is the only thing you will be able to see. Okay. So moving forward. So if you see this last point where we are talking about dam needs to fit into the ecosystem of content management system, product information management and AI system to Augment metadata extraction analysis for the context content performance insights. So this is one of the key where we are talking about in the cycle after delivery, the matrices and analysis and archival. So archival is simple. We just archive it. So it can be up to seven years or hundred years or when so howsoever we want to archive the data based on our business. But again, if you see that this speaks about very important thing, which is the content management system. So we all use content management system. Even if you are storing things in a file share or you are storing things on Google Drive or let's say, for example, for now, Ignu has some, uh, something called Egyan Kosh and all. So these are on knowledge management and content management portals, right? So out there, the product information management is one of the major things and the AI systems. While you are in education, you know there is a specific... Uh, target audiences, they will look in for a content. But when you move out to a business world, you have to make sure that somebody has to augment the metadata extraction for you. So the world of simple search has ended, wherein we talk about, I'll have keyword search and I'll put in keywords for it. But now the search has to learn itself by updating the context sensitive uh, metadata, extract the data and do analytics for the content performance. So let's say, for example, I had seen that I was using a keyword, uh, let's say a simple keyword, which was called, uh, you know, computer application. But again, it has to refine and see what is the content performance happening for it. it is it re uh, returning 10 articles, 20 articles, or it is returning 40 articles. So if I just make a change, so this should be a suggestion given by the, uh, you know, AI systems saying that if you put in instead of putting computer application, if you put in computer application in manufacturing, you will start getting more targeted and more results and your insights on the performance would increase. So that is basically where we are talking about things on it. And uh, that is where we have to see that in the overall digital asset management life cycle, how this whole thing is being rendered, worked on and enhanced. And now the customer experience is omni-channel. If you see, you see a content which is on TV, you see it on digital platforms, you see it on your mobile phones, you see it on uh, social media. So the content personalization should automatically happen for you. And the customer experience for omni-channel should be delivered. So let's say, for example, if you would have tried uploading any image on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter on a commercial social page, you would be able to see they have different sizes which are mentioned for it. And there are different, uh, you know, things being worked on, wherein you have to save an image in various uh, uh, resolution, shape and size. 
So for that, if you have a tool which can help you automatically, that is anyhow very helpful for the content creators. So moving forward to the next slide, which talks more about uh, the business problem, what is it is addressing. So what you should be asking for them is basically the awareness. So first is which assets are being used on social and they are trying to drive the engagement. So when we ask ourselves that do I need a damn solution and why do I need a damn solution? So these are the questions we should be asking about us. That what assets are used on social? Let's say we can take a simple example of let's say Ignu tries to go ahead and see that I want to have a damn solution for our marketing division. So the question would be first is what do I do? Do I create awareness? And it is being known for like, you know, social and they are trying to drive engagement, which you do for your students to engage, join things. You use various channels, you use advertisement, you use your, uh, you know, TV channels, you use your uh, radio channels, you use uh, email communication, chat communication, offline communication with your students during uh, your sessions around with the student. So we have to see that what are the channels we are trying to work on based on the awareness of the channels we should have. But then if you see the channels are like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, SEO, SEM. So these are the basic channels. If I'm trying to target on that, then I have to understand that, yes, I would need a damn system because my major 80% to 90% of the traffic or rather users come in from these channels. Then I definitely need a solution where I can, I'm able to bifurcate my assets, quickly monetize on my asset, quickly search my asset, quickly meta tag my assets. Okay. And what will be the KPI of this awareness and for this overall awareness is reach, reach to as much as users I can views, shares, clicks, comments, likes, search ranking, CPL sentiment, signs ups. So these are basic KPIs which your awareness should is driving. So if I'm asking that I need a dam, so I need to just check that does my business work on it. A car dealership might not require a lot of reach, view, shares, click because they know that I need, if I advertise on, uh, you know, the print media and in TV channels and I take a good model, I would be able to, you know, work on my reach and I would be able to get my sale done. But for products which are like e-commerce sites, which are like microblogging sites, which are small businesses which are coming up with FMCG products or any of other products of healthcare, technology, you know, online learning, they all need awareness around these omni channel and they cannot, their KPIs would be the same, which is our listed out there. And then consideration of what, how I can personalize the content to encourage purchase. Simple thing is there, which is on e-commerce side, website display ads. You, you might have seen marketplaces like Getty images and all which are selling images of various images which people are buying and they have an option to personalize it. Some is like you can just, uh, you know, have a bed cover of it, of your own photograph. You can have uh, certain cups being printed. So if you see there is a trend now for the holidays wherein people are getting a set of all, uh, you know, their T-shirts printed out if they are going in a holiday with a group of people and they name it something and they are just getting that personalized purchase for their overall content, whichever they want to print in. So it's a holiday destination or they're going for a wedding or they're going for a, you know, a family holiday. They will get everybody's photograph printed on it. Just name their family on the back of the t-shirt. So this is something where an e-commerce companies, websites, they display ads, they are working towards it. And again, the KPI is to drive engagement, get in people come in, open the, like, you know, sell it more plus encourage the purchase around it. Okay. So if somebody sends you an email that, okay, I'm giving a personalized uh, t-shirts and bags for your holiday and it is at XYZ rate. So you would be able to just see it from an e-commerce website or a display ad or a social email print. Okay. And then purchase. Am I using optimized image to improve my digital self purchase? or shopping cart conversion. So this is one of the major things which is happening. We would have, you will be astonished to know that in some of the platforms or rather the platforms we are using or we have, uh, you know, developed or invested into, we are seeing that a lot of such things, things are happening in today's uh, world that wherein your 
overall asset is being identified that this image helps me sell more in a specific region, then it would have been help me to sell in other regions. So that is what is also happening nowadays. So is there a tool available and who can give you such information of insights on a real time? It's only an AI based system. You have to have an AI based algorithm to give you such insights wherein you are seeing in that how my shelf presence or my uh, like optimization of images or rather any videos can help me sell more. So you might have seen there are various ads coming in or print ads coming in. Some of them are very popular. So one of the ads example is Amul, right? Utterly, utterly delicious. So they come up with very catchy things and they're still very popular ads, right? So these kinds of things are there where they see that during an event, I have made quickly an ad of Amul that they used to make it very, very innovative ads. So out there, it's a single image, which is trying to get you more shelf presence, which is trying to help you in conversion and it improves that. So you have to see a comparison where what image is working where and during which time. So in election time, if they had an image which is working very well, so they would have used it every time during the election or they could have optimized on that. Some images are not giving them that kind of an output. So that will be a challenge. And then retention is basically retaining an asset and getting the repeat business. So if you can just go through the KPIs and all that is out there. So that is how the business problem is being addressed today. Okay. Then we come down to AI and digital asset management. So we all use NLP, deep learning, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, wherein we are trying to combine this thing and trying to get the result out of it, wherein we are using overall, you know, let's say, for example, if you see this generative AI example, this is a change of winter day. You see this? This is an image. Change seen to the winter day, I'll generate it. It changes it to winter day. You see the difference? There is no human intervention in it. So let's say, for example, I have to market and sell an image during winters, or rather I have to produce an ad for winters, for sweaters, for t-shirts. This will automatically change itself from the context of the description, images, and videos. Okay. So here I'll take a pause and uh, I'll try to understand that. Uh, are there any questions here? No, I, I think they don't have any questions, but I think I have a one question, yeah. if you allow me. So uh, what specific roles do you think that art, uh, this artificial intelligence algorithms plays in streaming this, this kind of categorization, retrieval and analysis of these uh, digital assets? Yes. So rather, as we had talked about the meta tag and auto tagging of it, Tags are the key to retrieval of any of the assets because more information or more tags which are there available can help us retrieve the data faster and easier with the search. If we see our old kind of the way is the same that more tags you have, more keywords you have in it for a search, uh, like, you know, for any of the search engine, it's easy. That is well-established fact that it is very easy and you can just kind of retrieve the data if you have the right tag available. So, the role of AI is to generate these tags. And therein, we are just saying that if you see that out there in the last slide where I was talking about, that is one of the major things which we have talked about. That is basically the thing is content management, uh, basically the metadata where we generate the metadata and it is enriched metadata which we need to work out on. So that is one of the things we have seen okay i don't remember where it was but yes so the metadata is basically the key or the asset tagging is the key that in this tag if i see this automatically there are content apis available right now let's say one of the example is uh, google vision okay google vision api which tags this picture into four parts so it automatically teased green grass it automatically picks that you don't have to write it green grass plank wood brown wood a cabin uh, like you know a steel cabin blue sky, clouds, you know, uh, tree and all those things. So in this, if you get this auto tagging and if you are looking at a cabinet with a tea, uh, with green grass, so it will automatically search things like that. So the generative AI technique plus the overall uh, auto tagging, AI-based AI auto tagging helps you in basically faster search 
and faster results driven uh, you know assets to be pulled out with any of the systems so your search becomes more powerful and this ai algorithms which are used to identify the patterns and the uh, overall source material that is basically where you can use it so this is an example for the artwork of generative ai similarly you can have a example of generated a generative ai for meta tagging or getting the historical facts or things like that right so that can be done as well make sense does that answer your question yeah yeah thank you so this was our intelligent automation solution and all i won't get into that because that will become more uh, you know into what all solution components you can have how these operations can be done how your overall nlp based and lu based engine can helps you help you in uh, uh, retrieving faster like you know assets plus uh, uh, knowledge based systems from the repositories so i won't get into this but my thing is that dam customer relation brand management is like dating so all of the things and i use this slide very often so if you might have seen my uh, other uh, you know presentations as well so this is basically understanding that all these three system should understand each other and talk to each other with all the relevant attributes they can and in our computer world it is more from the information perspective collaboration that how they can collaborate and how they can integrate in terms of getting the data sets so this means that this is more on getting this information working on the overall relations of the data and then how you can retrieve it faster using the relevant methods okay so now what i'll do is i'll just take a time and can we can we just uh, if we can stop sharing for a while i'll just show you through one of the generative ai's things how exactly this is done and i will i will just uh, maybe professor suresh maybe i will just need हाँ बोलो संदीप सर ये दैट वी हैव टू स्टॉप रिकॉर्डिंग एक्चुअली सो ठीक है ठीक है नो प्रॉब्लम सो आई थिंक दे आर पुटिंग लाइव ऑन द फेस फेसबुक एंड ओके 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 नो प्रॉब्लम सो ही ही वांट टू शेयर समथिंग एक्चुअली व्हिच इज एनीवे सिंस इट्स बीइंग स्ट्रीमड लाइव लेट अस रिक्वेस्ट हिम yeah please okay then let me just do one thing i'll share something which is basically in a screenshot okay yes i can remove it okay screenshot from the live this thing i'll take a screenshot yeah meanwhile i think there are a few more questions sure yeah i can uh, take the questions yeah so one question from devansu says that is data mining is the base for ai see data mining is uh, okay so if we talk about data mining it's more related from uh, perspective of the data how you want to get in uh, you know information so rather ai can help into that but data mining is not the base for ai ai helps you in data mining right mm -hmm. so you cannot say that it's the base for ai right. ai is based on artificial intelligence which is more from a perspective of how a machine along with like you know Uh, how a machine can think like humans and that's why we say ai plus ml is the key uh, ingredient to work out on a successful ai model because you need machine learning plus ai as well and that's where you have various kinds of uh, uh, ai models which you have right and uh, we have a few more questions uh, like there are our students from nigeria and all mm -hmm. uh, so does ai have a side effect and one more question i think uh, the second question is also same uh, hashim uh, suraju is asking what are the ethical concern around artificial intelligence i think both questions are almost same yes so, so i think if you see this is something which is a topic of debate and it has been happening yes there is ethical con consideration around ai and you have been seeing this dp tpi images which are happening nowadays and people are you know curating content and making fake images for people you know and then other deep voices there like wherein you are using uh, generative ai for various uh, 
different techniques to school people that is one of the major challenges you would have you know so there are a lot of such examples where uh, ai has side effects and is not ethically you know correct being used it but again we have to put in a rule there is a pros and cons to everything which we are using as of today internet is a good thing internet is a bad thing as well mobility is a good thing mobility is a bad thing as well so we have to see where we use it but yes of course it cannot be without any no answers or without any uh, like you know uh, dark area you cannot have any uh, yes. thing existing in the world so you have to have uh, gray areas in it yes ai does that does uh, has that so we cannot deny it so any other questions sir right now i think uh... okay so what i have done is Yeah. I'll share one image. I've taken a screenshot from the live site, just removing the branding so that if it goes, also it's okay. Mm -hmm. okay so it is not a challenge. So I'll share my screen in a brand. So there are a few more questions, but we will take it at the end. Yeah. So okay. I'm just sharing this. Right. Is screenshot. Okay. This yes. is one of the projects we are working on. Where and if you see, you see this image. It's a simple yes. image, right? So this is AI insights being generated automatically by, uh, you know, Google Vision API. I'll give you the product as well. Okay. So Google Vision API helps us analyze the picture automatically, and it tells you what all things are available out here. So if you see subject of emotion, joy, surprise, underexposed. You see joy. the kid is happy eating an ice cream somebody is surprised as well okay so if you see there are three four images in it and it's trying to scale it okay and then you have a object called hat in this and a person in this so you see kid is uh, wearing a hat and this is auto generated there is no human intervention in this so you see face happy faces you see head out here interaction leisure you see the color you see the recreational share sharing the skin tone everything okay and you have other attributes as well so this we have coded and taken out what we want to generate from like you know what we generate uh, want to generate in the platform for such things and if you see this this is this is basically where we are talking about that it is not it is a safe search or it's a uh, like you know if it is a medical thing if it is racy and all so this is whole ai based insight being generated and you are able to see it based on that that this is how ai is helping any dam solution to generate all these keywords of it tags of it so that i don't have to write it manually so in the past what used to happen was we used to go ahead we had an interface we used to update it in the text box okay it is a hat it is a girl he she is joyed surprised whatever to increase the searchability and our seo sem in the past was working in the same manner for all the assets where you were tagging them and you were working on it right so that is basically one of the things and in this i'll just try to search i uh, just give me a second i'll share one more image which is more of a celebrity okay so there is something called celebrity recognition api also wherein you have things like that okay so and this is being get this is being implemented from for one of the like you know biggest uh, companies in india where they will be monetizing on those assets okay so now i'll just again start sharing so if you see this we all know her right so she is ashwarya rai if you see this they have picked up every details automatically by it is ai generated meta tagging for it earrings eyeliners eyelash flash photography jollip subject detail ashwarya rai has been automatically picked up because it is she is a recognizable celebrity what all objects are there it is highlighting that and again whatever attributes we have kept in for the sake of implementations are out there so this is where ai is helping you to generate i am not getting deep into how the engine is implemented what algorithm you have to write but if you want to see that whole this thing it's a simple thing i'll i'll uh, you know take you to through that uh, apis which you can just kind of go through it and see it your for yourself that what is uh, like you know uh api which is out there and how it is helping you in generating this thing if you just go to the cloud vision api of google you will be able to see 
that what all conditions it has, how it is supporting you and what is the client libraries available for you and all. So those are the like, you know, various things which help you generate such things and uh, they help you generate the meta tagging for your digital asset management solution, wherein you are able to easily, uh, you know, work on this. So I'm just sharing my screen. I'm just showing you the Google Vision API. Okay. This is one of the APIs which you can see what is Vision AI and all those things, how it helps you in doing that. Okay, you can just drag and drop an image and you can just see what it does for you. So if I try to drag and drop an image out here. So it is something I image, it'll just try to work on it. So it is how it is basically being used. So you can have your uh, this thing various uh, custom models created in it. You can use the existing models in it and, you know, what it talks about it, how, what it is in it, what all logos it has, what all text it has, what all properties it has, what all, is it a safe search or not? So if you see this, these were the kind of attributes also we are using, right? Out there, that adult is very unlikely, it's green. So if it is red, then it will be an adult image and all those things. So these things help us protect and work on a lot of things. So it was a very simple text image. So that's why it is not able to tell a lot about it. But if it was a, you know, an image around some person or some entities and all, it would have helped us achieve that. So that is all you have in these APIs, which you can try for free if you want to try. I'm just talking about Google Vision. You have the similar thing in AWS as well, recognize. And then you have similar in Azure as well. So all those things are available for you out there. So which you can kind of try at any point of time. And let me just see if I have some other image or not out here. Just give me a second. So if I open this truck image, it has things like this and all. It'll just give me a similar thing. It'll talk about the sky. It'll talk about the, uh, you know, things nearby and then it'll work out. So these are some of the things where you see the generative AI and, uh, you know, the key features which are on this particular uh, images are being worked out. Okay. And if you see this, it talks about it's a truck object. It has automatically identified. If there were more objects, car and other things, it would have identified. And I can refine it to get what is the make of the truck, information about the truck, if I use that model around. It has a tire, cloud, wheels, sky. You see this, the percentage of match. This is basically the percentage that it is matching. That gives that this is true. And this information is out there. You see as, asphalt road because it's the road asphalt we have, right? So you see how it is bifurcating this image and meta tagging. So if I want to search somewhere for a picture, which is, which is of a road trip and which is of dusk and is on an asphalt road with a truck, I'll it will return this to me because all these tags would be used by me. Okay. So it is picking up the logo as well, which was on the truck. So it is of a company which is picked out. What are the text it's picking up? What are the properties of the dominant colors and all those things, aspect ratios and everything? And of course, the safe search parameters that whether it is safe or not. So I hope that uh, makes sense a little bit how it is being used. I've just taken example of uh, Google Vision right now. Sorry. And if you want, we can just uh, explore around the same thing on various other things as well. Okay. So I'll just move back. I think uh, I'm in uh, almost uh, at the end of my session in terms of what I wanted to present. So what I'll do is and I'll just go back to the slide and work on a few things which are, you know, out there. So it is basically AI is, if you see, it basically helps you with, if you see this, this is all the kinds of AI we have been talking about. Analytic AI, functional AI, interactive AI, text AI, visual AI. Okay. So therein, what is the emphasis on this when we use it in a 
you know, a dam solution or a digital asset management solution, we'll be able to see we use all of these parts. Okay. If you see analytical AI is being used to scan ton of data because you have to get the data from the archives. Let's say, for example, you are a company today, Ignu. Ignu might have a huge course where since it was formed in 80s, okay, 1980s, it might be having a huge set of uh, books and all which they might have kept it in a scan format or as a copy in their library. So which can be scanned and the digital asset can be done wherein you can have the data turn after doing analytics of AI or enhancements. You might be seeing certain things coming up today wherein they give you that you can just, uh, you know, enhance the images of your old relatives or old black and white pictures. So therein you can just have that basically for scanning the ton of data, dependencies and pattern and for contributing the data based decision, data driven decision making, we can use this in a dam solution wherein it takes care of this analytic ability to determine whether I can convert this or not, whether I can find something similar to this or not and work it out. And then you have functional AI where you are taking actions, giving recommendation on the data and the searches. And then you have communi interactive AI, which is you are automating the communication. And this is all related to a digital asset management platform. It is not related to digital asset management, but to a platform that it should have all these components to make it a successful AI based digital management platform. Okay. So that is basically the, the one. And when you talk about the text AI, that is more from a perspective of any customer support system or the digital AI system, wherein uh, you have to get in some data based on the semantic maps or the text input by the people and all. And then the visual AI, where we are talking about converting of images, converting of video into insights, getting the details from that. And that is what, uh, how it helps you to propel your business. Because if you are able to get it from an image, you are uploading a video, you want to quickly do a multi-channel, omni-channel update, you can do it. You get the meta taking of it so that it's uh, reach increases. So if a person is searching for a person wearing with hat or SRI wearing a hat, so all your, this thing, it is tagged all Azure pictures where she's wearing a hat automatically. Then it will just pull out all those pictures and give it to you. Or it is a red color hat. It will just give you that red color hat. So those are the simple examples that if you are looking in for a specific input from a perspective of your overall, uh, you know, uh, requirement for an asset. So that is how, let's say, for example, I was making a presentation. I'm looking in for an image, which is a uh, red colored background, having certain information around, uh, you know, one of the monuments of India, like Taj Mahal. So I can easily put that in a uh, dam engine or a, a search and try to get that. So how intuitively it can just tag certain assets like that. First is tagging so that it knows that this asset belongs to this category. And then second is retrieval of it, which we have a lot of good uh, engines out there to help us with retrieve and all. So I think that should not be a challenge, but yes, to tag is the challenge which this is addressing and to enhance and to collate. That is where it is helping us. Any questions here? I see there are nine new messages. Yeah, there are a few questions. So we'll take those questions. Let me just go through one by one. Uh, one of the participants says, Rashi Chakravarti, uh, she has mentioned that uh, we can introduce an artificial intelligence to the Hadoop. Then we can easily maintain all the unstructured digital asset easily. Normally, we extract all the data. In fact, like she's talking about how, how we can manage the... So, yes. So, in yeah. terms of architecture, yes. So, today we are not looking at either it can be Hadoop or any other product. But the whole thing is that we are today only storing, uh, we are treating data as and storing, trying to store big data as unstructured format only. And that is the key where AI adds a value. That is true. So because of that thing only, we, we don't like, you know, if we talk about the olden days, like RDMS and all that is going on, we are already, everybody is working on unstructured data. And we talk about unstructured data, and we want to use actual potential of AI, the data has to be more than uh, or close to a couple of petabytes. Therein you see the actual power of it. 
So you are right. Yes, Hadoop can be used. Other things can be used as well. Yeah, I think uh, another question by Ayman Manjur. What are the ethical implications of AI in decision making process? See, this is a very wide topic, and it is more of that we don't have authority controlling AI or you know in the decision making. So it depends on the person who is implementing it. Yes, there are certain, so there is no benchmark or there is no authority which controls it, right? So if you see DMARC is the authority controlling mails, if you see that, uh, you know, for your domain registration, there is an authority I can which controls it. But ideally for AI, we don't have such authority yet, you know, a single authority which can control that. So I think it's on individual creators, how they are working on it, because that is right now not a very, very... Uh, you know, process oriented or rather uh, well laid out uh, process for any of these, uh, you know, our uh, competent authorities. So there is no authority for that right now. That's why you have seen that uh, a lot of uh, things were there of uh, like uh, in the past for AI based, uh, you know, robberies, AI based uh, uh, voice manipulation, image manipulation, video manip manipulation. So there is no relevant authority on top of that to monitor it right now. But I think slowly we should have it. Yeah. I think even uh, one of the participants has mentioned that deep fake is a currently biggest side effect of AI. So I think yeah. deep fake is something. See, if you talk about deep fake and all these things, this these are basically it can be used for good, it can be used for bad as well. But there is no authority which controls it that you cannot generate this kind of a deep fake or you cannot generate this kind of a uh, you know, deep fake. If you see a lot of content creators have taken deep fake for uh, generating their content and they are just uh, crawling sites, uh, crawling contents over the web and generating a unique content, mixing it. That is being used for music also to generate music. So they go through various uh, musics and just combine something and generate music. And that is people are using that for uh, the generative AI for that only. But yes, Deep fake is one of the major challenges and there would be other challenges coming as well till the time we have a uh, yes, control yes. over that, which is very, very unpredictable at this point of time. Yeah. And another student says that uh, Bharati Chaudhary, what is the role of AI in data science? I think AI is just one of the component, I would say. Right. Maybe you can, you can talk more on that. Yeah, so what is the, which is the question we have this one, Devanshu? AI in data science, like data science perspective. Yes, we have already answered when we were uh, answering Hadoop and all. Yes. It yes. helps you in uh, rather tagging and retrieval. See, again, when we are talking about any of the data sciences or data models, we are talking about getting the information quickly and the related information from wide data sources. That can be data mark, data lakes, any whatever data marts, data lakes, data warehouses, okay, or any of the objects which are available, data sources available. So that is basically uh, uh, AI is helpful in doing that because with the combination of ML and AI, you can make a specific uh, model to retrieve things on a certain criteria and that keeps on learning itself based on the inputs it's getting and the feedback it's getting from the relevant uh, search or rather your user inputs or rather your user pattern. So that is where it helps. So that is where it just helps you in enhancement of that overall thing. Right. So another student asked like, can AI go against human? And also I think uh, I will add one more question to that. Avishek Raj also have a similar question. Uh, will uh, this artificial intelligence uh, affect the job opportunities? Can you please describe some real life use cases of AI? Because nowadays the whole computing world is centered ar around AI. Even processors are being built, uh, uh, keeping AI capabilities in mind. What are your thoughts on this? Okay, so it's a good question. First of all, it cannot go against when you are talking about can compute like you know can uh, ai go against human it won't yet it it learns itself but as of today it won't maybe in future it will i am not sure but again right now it won't because there is a limited uh, capability of this uh, 
like you know overall ai algorithms which we are using and research are happening where they have said that ai has gone and started generating and taking over code itself started programming itself but again that is more from a perspective of what worse it can do but again that is a debatable topic it's more of a sci-fi right now right now yes. in yes. future if we have all robots working for us, uh, us at home and all those things then maybe ai has some effect on it because right now also if you see if ai is bothering you you can turn off your cell phone you're out of the digital world right <laughs> so yes. you switch off your computer versus you break your computer you're out of that ai world so those things are there but again yeah it is a very different question though it's yeah. a good question but again mm -hmm. right now i don't see that happening yeah so Other yeah. Yes. yes, please, please. So one of the students is asking for, can you share your slides for this presentation? Is it possible? Uh, uh, no, I won't be able to. It has certain information around. It's not generic. But yeah. uh, yes, a similar copy I can give. Yeah. I'll see what okay. exactly can be done after trimming it down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another student from uh, Hasim Surajo again, he has asked the question, how artificial intelligence changing our words? What are the sum of the misconception about artificial intelligence? And what is the future of AI? Yeah. Okay. Again, see, artificial uh, intelligence is changing our world. That is true. And I'll answer this question also in context of the last uh, question which was asked that it, it is affect the job market or not. It will not affect the job market. It will affect, see, what helps you when you are doing a calculation, mental calculation, and when you are doing a calculation in calculator or computer or a spreadsheet, the difference is that you have a accurate information, accurate answer in lesser time from these devices because they have been programmed for that. In the similar manner, artificial intelligence would help you a lot in doing regular tasks, which you program in, you create a model for that, and it will be basically data driven and it will learn itself, but it needs data onto it. So the a simplest example would have been you go to Google and search some random phrase. Okay. A random phrase. If you search like, you know, it raining, it's raining cat and dogs, or you put in some, uh, you know, overall, uh, abbreviation or a idiom or a, you know, a saying, you will be able to see that it literally interprets it, but over the period of time, it learns. So a year back, this used to happen with me. If I, if I was writing phrases like it's raining cat and, cats and dog, it used to say, and I used to translate it, it used to translate it that kutte uh, billion ki barish hori. Okay. So that was the AI and translator being working. But again, it is basically, now it has been working in a manner where you have a generative AI being used. So if you just for this question, I'll quickly share my screen and show you this result, which will basically you guys can do it yourself as well. The, you know, people out here. Let's see, just a moment. Huh? So if you see this, it's raining cat and dog is a idiom means this, this, this. And if you see generative AI experimental. So this is basically being done by generative AI. It is giving you a picture also. It has searched where it's raining cat and dogs and all it has because this is being done because it tags. So why it is phrase is being used? Okay. So that they have given you and this, all these things are there and it has given you everything. And that is where it adds on to things that what is happening out there, why it is being used. And this is being improved and it's learning itself or else it won't have learned, learned itself. Okay. So that is where you have to see that how it can be helpful. Yes, AI is generating and helping you on things. So if I come back to your question as well, I'll be able to just say that it is not dangerous. It is changing the world that now you can do a faster search. You can do your work faster. It's not a threat to you because it is helping you. It cannot go beyond human because there is one thing which we have to understand that it does not have a capability of imagination. It cannot imagine. It is a machine. Machine cannot have like, you know, imagination or uh, power of uh, dreaming or the power of uh, uh, brain where you are talking about and you are basically working on certain things, which is uh, based on creativity and imagination. That cannot happen because it's more of a model is data driven. You cannot simulate your brain, the kind of 
super computer you would need that is way beyond but yes if we reach there that will be really good what are some of the misconceptions about ai yes people are having misconceptions or conceptions on ai that it is like you know i can do anything from ai no please understand that ai is not something that will do magic for you it cannot read your brain so you it is again a computer program which is more of data driven it runs itself based on algorithms so it is not something that which can read your brain okay or read your mind and just give you some answers around the world and it can do it if it doesn't have a data it won't answer so if you see chat gpt also that has a specific uh, like you know rather a uh, disclaimer that it has data up to a specific year beyond that it won't be able to search if something new has happened okay now what is the future of ai yes there is a very bright future you guys can also work on various things new models how you can use it for anything let's say you are talking about deep fakes you can try to make models around which can identify deep fakes which can compare an image and give you that so that is what it is you can just work on that okay sir what is the right and effective way to learn ai i have given you the link for uh, google vision api you can go to that you can go to google uh, learn or you can go to microsoft learn microsoft university or you can go to aws university and you can learn simply this ai uh features how their apis are being used what are the kind of various models available how you can create a custom model and you can just start doing some fun stuff so that you create interest in running it, like you know learning it and then you can learn it so i think there is no more question out there how artificial intelligence is different from human intelligence i have already told you it does not have a you know creativity it cannot think it it is not creative it cannot uh, uh, envision uh, it cannot dream that is one of the major things in your dreams you just close your eyes and you want to go to new york you can easily go to your new york uh, you know just by imagining that i am there you are dreaming and you are going there but again ai won't be able to do that that creative part of the brain is not available i think there is another question on uh... AI replacing uh, some of the testing tools like test ng yes see ai when you talk about testing tools testing is a repetitive task when you talk about testing but it cannot so test ng and all tools replacement can be done very easily that is not a challenge because in some of the overall uh, uh, you know test tools and all what you do is you just create a simulation and that simulation is being run and you can talk of like you know a tester can think of 5 10 recombinations whereas ai would be able to pull out a generative ai would be able to pull out 40 uh, like you know scenarios from the latest news and latest uh, threats which were done and it can create 40 scenarios so obviously it might be able to easily replace it and be more effective because it's able to get the live scenario because when you are testing something it's a very creative job of testing so i remember long time back when i used to do certain coding and all those things along with a very 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 smart guy who has been instrumental in making a lot of microsoft products and later on products for linux as well so he used to tell me that whenever you have to work you have to think when you are you are testing or developing something you have to think like a criminal that how i can break this thing because that is where the tester comes in and the hacker comes in both of them are the same people so the tester should be able to think that how a criminal would think to break this system and how i can make sure that i tried that scenario and see whether my software has that remediation or not right so that is the thing you have to see because if there is good in the world there is evil also in the world so what happens is if there is a hacker out there there is a tester also out there and a coder out there who can make sure that his code is robust and the tester just helps him evaluate that scenario beforehand whatever are the vulnerabilities in his system therein we call all these uh, vapt and all those things are there penetration testing all those things which are there wherein we see so if you are seeing that you have put in a text box and you know you have not uh, used html encoding with it a, a, somebody can come in in a multi line text box put put a script and like you know do a ddos attack on your server or anything else like that okay or run a script on your server and just do uh, like you know delete your websites or do anything with you so you have to make sure that you take the relevant steps to do that and a tester should be able to test that 
script attack and a developer should make sure that he uses the right uh, things available like tags like HTML and code or other things, whatever are applicable to basically deny that attack. Yeah. Thank you. I think we will just take last one more last question. Uh, if you read at the last one, Amal, Amal, why Elon Musk said AI is far more dangerous than you think? Maybe you can also give your thought on this. See, I would just only think that everything and anything is more dangerous than you think. When the guns, guns came in, machine gun came in, the people said that they are very dangerous. But again, you have to wise these. Words. When nuclear bombs came in, they are again the dangerous source of it. Of course, it can. you can have a lot of ill effects of AI. You have already talked about deep fakes. People are having losing their reputation on based on that. People are being robbed on based on that. So of course it is dangerous and it can be more dangerous than you think. Let's say for example, uh, AI can just trigger a nuclear warhead okay, by itself. Then it's very dangerous for the world and for the countries, right? But again, you have to make sure that uh, you have to you know, basically understand that yes, it can be dangerous. So, but again, how you have to control it, that is how it is. So there is someone who has said, is there possible to create artificial general intelligence? So the whole thing is, yes, it is. But again, you have to, you know, kind of work on that model around with it. And you can create certain general intelligence around it. You can also create a barrier or a monitoring uh, engine to monitor all the AI engines around the internet. But again, you have to do a very hard work around that. Yes, I think uh, there are many more questions, but I will uh, request all the participants to send your queries to my mail IDs so that I can pass it to the expert. And uh, we'll wind up the session now. So uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Venugopalji, for your excellent presentation. And uh, I'm very much confident that your session has uh, enriched everyone's knowledge and understanding. And... Uh, uh, Feedback link we, we will be sharing in this chat box now, and we will request everyone to give your valuable feedback. And but before that, now I request uh, Dr. Akshaji to propose vote of thanks. Good evening, everyone. Uh, on behalf of School of Computer and Information Sciences. The first person to be thanked is uh, Dr. Venu Gopal himself, who made such a wonderful presentation. And uh, especially the question answer session was so beautifully handled by both of you that it uh, clarified many of the doubts of the student. And that is the uh, real hallmark of a good session. So many questions were asked and so many questions were, every question was almost replied to perfection. So thank you, uh, the presenter. Dr. Venugopalji, and thank you all the students for asking good questions. You were really wonderful. You were very nice and listening very patiently and asking good questions. So thank you every participant who was there. Then my real thank goes to for our authorities who had made this particular thing possible, uh, starting from Professor, uh, our, our Vice Chancellor, sir, our Pro Vice Chancellors, and our Director, Professor P. V. Suresh, and most of all, Professor Sandeep Singh Rawat, who is uh, doing this KT <laughs> KTS, uh, making this KTS possible. Uh, our sincere, my sincere thanks to all the all my colleagues who have joined from IGNU, and my school's colleague who have special taken uh, pains and uh, uh, in, with interacting with uh, Dr. Sandeep. And uh, thank you, everyone, once again. If I have missed anybody. <laughs> Please, uh, thank you <laughs> from all. Before thank that, uh, we will request everyone to switch on their uh, videos so that we can have uh, uh, this uh, photo session. So I request everyone to please switch on your videos now. And I will request uh, uh, my, my colleagues to take a screenshot. Can I uh, switch off the cam now? 
Yes, I think uh, we can have. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very one much. Question from you guys, uh, feedback. Yes, you yes. The session should have been more, uh, you know, technical, or you think it was the right mix? Because what I think is for MCA students and all, this can go up to a lot of levels wherein we can put in some algorithms and all those things. But again, I was not sure that whether the audiences had any clue about it. So that's why I kept it at a high level techno functional thing. It was not very, very technical. So I just wanted to input that in your usual sessions, what, what is your uh, overall objective? Is it the same or it is something you try to make it very technical? Basically, it is fine because here the audience are not just MCA students, but also our uh, colleagues uh, across the departments who do not have much idea about AI. But for example, you have shown one image where you select a winter environment, the entire image changes. Okay, right. such things will be of interest to the non-technical people and will have uh, some interest created in them for knowing more about AI. What mm -hmm. we will do is that we have AI and machine learning in our MCA mm -hmm. and for our online and ODL students, we will conduct separate sessions mm -hmm. from you by you on AI, wherein you can uh, completely put the things technically. So this is I fine for the for ML in your uh, this thing also MCA course for AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was also very introductory session, but yes. So, okay, sir. Thanks. Thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much for your kindness. Thanks, sir. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you.